Kamigawa is a sordid cyberpunk world full of brand new planeswalkers. I'm going to tell you all about them. Hello, folks, and welcome to the Signature Spell Bomb. My name is Chad. Today, I'm going to be reviewing all of the planeswalkers that came out in Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. This is going to be a new way I do this. The reason for that being is that, oh, how can I put this? I have an Arlen Cord preview explaining Arlen Cord as a review to the Midnight Hunt set, and I have a deck tech. Because those two exist with separate thumbnails, they're actually keeping people from discovering the right video. People who might want the deck tech are discovering the review and vice versa. So I'm going to, moving forward, do all the Planeswalkers from each new set together as one video and do individual deck techs as I come up. Instead of already done a Wanderer deck tech, you can kind of see that in action. Let's start today with Kaito Shizuki. The reason I'm going to start with Kaito is, well, he's the one I think has a lot of very interesting play space and mechanic. He is the lowest cost of the Planeswalkers I'm going to be talking about today. He is a brand new Planeswalker, calls Kamigawa its home. In fact, in the lore of the world, he is a knight or guard for the Wanderer, the Wandering Emperor. When she disappears, he decides to become a ninja and work in the background of society to try to find a way to find the missing emperor. Falls in with a bad group of ninjas, does a whole bunch of dirty work, ends up, you know, actually meeting a raccoon friend that has a planeswalker spark that can turn into a mask that allows him to planeswalker spark before finally re-meeting up with the emperor and the story really starting. Uh, Kaito's static is when he enters the battlefield, he phases out. That's a neat piece of, piece of protection that will keep him from being targeted his first turn in play. This plus one lets you draw a card, and then you discard a card unless you attack. So, he seems like he wants to be in an aggressive deck, and his minus two kind of underlines that a little bit more, because with minus two, and we create a 1-1 one, one unblockable ninja token. The blockable ninja token not only benefits us by being able to attack without it being blocked and never having to discard a card, but also it lets us make blockers to protect Kaito's face and keep him in play. His minus seven is whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player. Again, we have unblockable creature tokens. We search our library for a blue or black creature and put it directly onto the battlefield. Tutoring for powerful <laughs> blue or black creatures is an amazing ultimate. It does way more than I would have expected. On its surface, it seems like this deck might want to be a ninja deck, but I think it's far more likely that this deck wouldn't mind being a polymorph deck. A polymorph deck generally wants to get big creatures from within your deck just randomly out on the board and spit them out, just like Kaito's last ability. Polymorph abilities generally cost three and a blue. You sacrifice a creature, in this case a 1-1 unblockable token, to flip cards from the top of your deck until you find another creature, and you're hoping to hit one of your bombs. In fact, you're hoping not to have any other lower cost creatures in the deck at all to help with this strategy. So ninjas is one way to go, which to me speaks to draw abilities, but also polymorph might be another really fun direction to take this commander in, since he does seem kind of built for it. Next, we have Tamio, the Completed Sage, arguably the character that has the worst time of it on this plane. I'm going to just go through the story real quickly. Tezzeret has been working with the Phyrexians way back during the entire period he's been working with Bolas. So he's been playing a bunch of different ends towards the middle, probably all for his own means. We know this because... He assaulted the Emperor in a hopes to awaken her Planeswalker Spark and instead damaged it. And that's why when she Planeswalks, she has to keep full and total concentration in order not to move to a new plane. So, the reality chip is created to help hold her to a plane. They trust Tamiya with the reality chip because she should be able to safely guard it, only for her to be attacked by Tezzeret. And, you know, uh, Phyrexian Praetor, nobody remembers the name of. My kid. <laughs> Jingataxis. 
They steal her and the reality chip in order to further Pyrexine's goal of visiting and mapping more planes of the multiverse to complete, as well as completing Tamiyo herself. She's a two, a green, a blue, and a Phyrexian hybrid green-blue mana cost. Five cost, she is the most expensive planeswalker in the set. As my belief is, four is an average planeswalker cost when building an Oathbreaker deck. That's about the sweet spot. If it's lower than that, your deck is going to be a little bit faster. If it's higher than that, you're going to have to be okay with soft blocking your signature spell behind your commander till you can get to that higher mana value. At five, she's not the greatest, but she's a five loyalty planeswalker that ults at seven. So that's still within the realm of possibility. At four and two life, because we can use her completed ability to pay in life instead of mana, she's better. She Her loyalty is lower. It's harder to hit her ultimate. But she's now playing at a faster speed. Since her uh, loyalty comes into play at three, if you pay two life instead of five, that is an interesting trade off. Her plus one does slow down the game a little bit by allowing you to tap artifacts and creatures and opponent controls. Um, and they don't, in that permanent, it doesn't untap during its controller's next turn. Minus X lets us exile target non-line permanent with mana value X or less from our graveyard and we create a token copy. That to me feels like a signpost to the type of deck you should be playing, a copy and clone deck. What's most notable about this is it says you exile target non-land permanent, which means literally any permanent that's existed in the history of magic can be cloned with her, which is relatively new. I think there's only one other enchantment in the game that does that. That is something to keep in mind. I myself have a Tamiyo Super Friends clone deck that would love to run her instead because she more completely, I didn't mean that, <laughs> more correctly, fits the needs and wants of the deck. I like the signature spell Repudiate and Replicate with her. Repudiate counters a, a ability, which is very important in Oathbreaker to just shut down somebody's alt or something else that could be very dangerous, and Replicate lets you make copies, so it feels the need. I also, for signature spells, maybe suggest going the route of things that tap opponent's creatures down and then maybe freezes them. We minus seven her, we create a legendary artifact token that makes spells we cast cost two less to cast, and we can tap it to draw a card. Cameos have often given us, like, basically a... You get to draw X amount of cards as an ultimate, and then you can cast them for free or stuff along those abilities. So this is not unheard of as a Tamiyo ability. It is by far the weakest Tamiyo ability, in my opinion. And I don't like it because it creates an artifact that can be destroyed that has no protection whatsoever. The minus two is going to be great. It's going to get us really far in the games. It's at least going to play the commander tax after we use her up once, you know. But I probably wouldn't use that as a signpost as an ability for things I want to do. I mean, if you're going to get to seven the hard way. There's so many other ways to reduce spell cost by two, but you're gonna get to seven the hard way. It might as well be in an art and it might as well be in an artifact storm deck where you're then just gonna storm a whole bunch of things onto the battlefield that cost zero instead of one or two now, and then go off with a signature spell like I don't know, Chatterstorm, for instance, as another route. I'll leave that up to you. If you have a good idea for how to use Tamio, please let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, if you could like, share, and subscribe the video to help grow Oathbreaker in the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Next, we have Tezzeret, Betrayer of Flesh. For two and two blue, he's a legendary planeswalker. The first activated ability of an artifact, we activate each turn cost two less to cast. That's going to help us with all sorts of abilities. Um, it's not as broken, I think, as some people think. But it is going to pay for like some reconfigure or some equip costs or other random things. We plus one him, we draw two cards and then discard a card unless we discard an artifact card. I feel like Mirrodin Besieged is a clear like enchantment you might want to run in his deck because if you choose the uh, Phyrexians win side of that, you can just laser target one opponent out of the game at the end of each of your turns once you have 20 artifacts in your graveyard, which is pretty doable. His minus two 
permanently makes an artifact a 4-4 uh, four, four creature or permanently turns a vehicle into a creature. It's very good. It does make me feel like maybe you want to run a vehicle deck, but I'll leave that decision up to you. But there are plenty of other instants and sorceries that have a similar ability to that, like even suit up out of this set. You could run a signature spells. This minus six gives you an emblem that says whenever an artifact you control becomes tapped, you draw a card. If you do run the vehicles route, then you have free thing on the board that lets you tap artifact creatures down just to crew. And then definitely you'd want to run, um, I can't remember, I think it's Throne of the God Pharaoh. It's two mana, it's an artifact. It says at the end of your turn, each of your opponents lose life equal to the number of tapped creatures you control. If you can tap down all your creatures, draw a bunch of cards towards whatever your win condition is, and burn a lot of opponents out of the game, it's pretty good. There's also Angel's Trumpet, I want to say from Urza's Saga, that works very similarly that you may want to give a look. Lastly, we have the Wandering Emperor. For two and two white, she has Flash, which is probably one of the most important parts of this card. Winters the battlefield, we can use her bit, her loyalty abilities as Flash that first turn. If we plus one her, we can put a 1-1 counter on a creature against first strike, so essentially a combat trick. If we minus one her, we can create a 2-2 Vigilant Samurai. If we minus two her, we can exile a creature and gain two life. These are all great like combat mechanics or combat trick type of abilities. And I think this is signposting us to play maybe, I don't know, uh, blink spell. Because every time we blink her, we're gonna get access to all of these abilities again at instant speed. So we blink her on an opponent's turn, her one one counter maybe on opponents blocking creatures so that they can kill something they wouldn't be able to usually, or, you know, to, Instant speed, create a blocker for herself. And there's something to be said about gaining two life and Oathbreaker. So I do think blink spells make for a good signpost for signature spells. Also anything that makes tokens, because that's something she wants to do. I do feel like she is a fairly dedicated white weenie or stacks commander. I'll leave that up to you, but certainly I think people have seen the strength of this card um, in arena already. So it's something to keep in mind it has kept her price relatively high as well. So that's all of the Planeswalkers out of this set. Um, I think they're amazing. And if you have any way you would run them or you uh, want to show me a deck you made, please put it in the comments below. I appreciate you guys dropping by. If you do watch the channel regularly, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you subscribe, I'll get you on this list below that is scrolling by if you want to support the channel. You can become a patron. Uh, other than that, I'm going to put a video up on screen right here. That's going to probably be another deck tech or maybe another Kamigawa video that you can watch after this. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and thank you for stopping on by.